Welcome back to r slash neighbors from hell, where people share stories about their crazy neighbors. And if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe to join our amazing community. And without any further ado, let's dive right into the stories. The first one is titled HOA towed my car illegally, forged documents and sued me, I obliterated them in court. Strap in and get ready, because this is a true HOA nightmare. Now, my neighborhood's HOA is optional and since I did not want to bother with all of the problems I've heard about, I just did not join it. It was my first time owning a home though, so I was not exactly sure at first what kind of power the HOA president had. I could tell right away when I told her I had no interest in joining that she didn't like me at all. That was fine by me though, because she lived a couple of blocks away and I rarely needed to see her. There is no doubt in my mind, the things that started to happen after the first few months of living there were directly because of her. I started to receive fines in my mail from the HOA talking about different violations. They were citing bylaws and other things that I never heard of and didn't fully understand. They were telling me that my trash cans were too far out into the street and that I was not supposed to mow my lawn on a Sunday morning. Which I do because that is my day off from work and the only time I really had to do it. So even though I was not part of the HOA, I thought those rules still might have applied to me because I was a homeowner and paid them. They listed that their money was going to be used for reparations, assessments and repairs and I had no idea how those small things would need any of those and I never saw anything actually being done of it. I now know that the best thing I could have done was nip the whole situation in the butt and told her that I was not going to stand for this. The fines were not a lot though and I decided that the cost for them was a fair exchange for me not having to get into a fight. That opinion changed really quickly a week later when I walked out of my house to see my car being towed. Now I think it is very important to mention that I park my car every night in my own driveway. There is no reason or explanation for having me towed for what I later found out was labeled as illegal parking. Now the gloves were coming off and this woman was going to get a piece of my mind. I marched over to her house and started banging on her front door. HOA president, how can I help you? She had a smug look on her face and knew exactly why I was there. Me, my car is being towed from my own driveway. HOA president, well, it was sticking out into the street and that violated the bylaws. So I called the tow company that the HOA signs with to tow it. Me, my car was not in the street though, it was fully in my driveway and you called to have it towed. HOA president, if you keep using that tone with me, I will report you for harassment and you will get more than a fine and a tow. I walked away before I said or did something I would regret later on and went back to my house to plan. I did a ton of research into our specific HOA and found that not only did nothing about cars sticking out of driveways exist, but that she was not allowed to fine me for any of those things since I was not part of the HOA to begin with. So I decided to get a small revenge and start doing anything I wanted and even some things I didn't that directly went against her by laws. The fines in the mail stacked up and I kept them as a personal trophy collection. The one thing I couldn't ignore was the papers I was handed by a carrier that said I was being taken to court by the HOA president. That's right, she was suing me. Luckily my brother was a lawyer and was laughing at how little of a case this woman actually had. I could tell you exactly what our plan was going in, but I think it is much better seeing how it all played out. We got to the courtroom and she had the same smug grin on her face, this time though I had one of my own to give back to her. We settled in and waiting for her to make her case. HOA president, as you can see by these photos and copies of documents sent to Mr. OP, he has violated multiple statutes and refused to pay any of his fines. Now I know that I could sue for much more, but all I want for him is to pay his fines and my lawyer fees. Judge. Mister, do you deny being given fines for any of these violations? Me, smiling, no your honor, I did receive every single one of those. The woman was beaming and the judge looked confused. Judge, 
Then can you tell me why you are refusing to pay the fines that you received from the HOA? I assume you have a reason considering you are countersuing. I was looking right at the judge, but my brother told me her face was priceless. Me? Yes, your honor. I'm not paying them because I'm not part of the neighborhood HOA. HOA president? I have his signed documents right here. She hands them to the judge and a copy to us and it takes everything I can to stifle my laughter. Judge, you are claiming you are not part of the HOA and yet you signed papers agreeing to it. My brother, your honor, those are clearly forgeries of my client's signature. We can get you proof for his actual signature if you wish, but I doubt that on an official document he would misspell his own name. The judge was looking at the woman and you could tell that he was angry. Her smile wavered as she knew that she lost the only thing she had to try and get me to pay these fines. Judge, well, if he is not part of the HOA, then you cannot fine him and sue him for this money. He didn't agree to these terms and I'm going to follow up on that potential forgery which is a crime. For now, though we will go into the defendant's counterclaim, he is suing for past fines paid, lawyer fees and an illegal vehicle towing. HOA president, wait, he cannot sue me for those things, I was following the rules. Judge, rules that didn't apply to him at the time. I cannot get you the money back for past fines paid, but I will grant you lawyer fees. Now please tell me about this illegal towing too. I tell him the story and the HOA is eager to jump in again. HOA president, it was sticking all the way into the street and it was far too dangerous to leave it there. I had to have it towed or it would have caused an accident. Judge, Mr. OP, do you have any proof that your car was fully in your driveway and not in the middle of the road? Me? Actually, your honor, I do. This time I turn and see just how shocked the HOA president's face is. I had installed security cameras when I moved in and showed the judge the footage that I had concealed this whole time, showing how my car was neatly in my driveway when it was towed. Not only did the judge find in my favor, but was told that if she didn't leave me alone, he was going to grant a restraining order against her. She had no choice but to just sit quietly as I handled my house however I wanted to. They could not prove that it was her that forged my name, so she didn't get in trouble for that, but destroying her in court was oh so satisfying. If only she stopped while she was ahead, she might have gotten away with it. Trying to bully me into the HOA though only led to her being destroyed in court. I hear they are holding an election for a new HOA president later this year and I have a sneaking suspicion that she won't get elected again. And guys, if you enjoy the HOA stories, please don't forget to like the video and maybe even post some star emojis in the comments if you want to support my channel. Thank you so much in advance, your help is very much appreciated. The next one is a neighbor story from r slash ask reddit. It starts like this. Our first apartment together, we lived in an upper of a house. The lower part had a family with a few kids in it, great we thought, no crazy parties or anything like that. No crazy parties, but a few weeks after we moved in, the flies started showing up. Our apartment was full of gnats and flies by the end of the first month. We had just scoured the whole place, were not leaving food out, could not figure out for the life of us where they came from until we saw them coming out of the vents. The family got evicted a few months later, the landlord showed us the unit and we all beheld the horror. There was dog poop and rotten food covering the floor, piles of garbage everywhere, the place was a total gut. They ended up listing the unit at a higher price to make up for refinishing. We should get some better people in now, the place looks nice, we thought. Our apartment was finally bug free. We did not actually see the next family that moved in. They arrived while we were gone on a weekend trip and immediately covered every window with sheets. A weird smell started filling our apartment, it was acrid and off. We closed the vents again and figured that they were probably still cleaning as they settled in. Then the garbage started piling up outside and the overnight noise began. It sounded like they were bowling in the basement, so many plastic jugs overflowing the recycling, no sounds during the day at all, my hubs worked third shift at the time and the nights were long and full of weird sounds shaking the whole house. Like at 4am, let's build a pyramid, noise. 
After a week of this or so, husband politely knocks on their door on his way home from work, hoping to introduce himself and ask them to keep the noise down. No answer, he tried for a few days and even on the weekend at different times, but no one ever opened the door. A note was taped to our door shortly after, People upstairs don't bother us and we won't bother you. If you ever step on our porch again, I will call the cops. Mind your own business, don't mess with me. Guess Chicago. We almost immediately started looking for a new place to live, luckily moving pretty quickly after. Our new unit neighbors were not much better, but their names were not nearly as good. The next one is another story from r slash ask reddit and it starts like this. Buckle up kids, this one is fun. When I was growing up my rear neighbor, Janet, and my mom were both going through rough divorces at the same time. My mom mostly kept to herself at first, Janet did not take that approach. At first it seemed frustrating but reasonable, we had dogs and a fenced in yard in the suburbs. One day the dogs were left outside and barked too long. Janet filed a noise complaint. Then she started filing noise complaints anytime she saw the dogs outside. Then my mom started keeping them inside more and then Janet filed complaints when she could hear the dogs barking inside or when she heard someone else's dogs. Or really, just whenever she felt like it because this was not about the noise, it was about Janet feeling a sense of control over something during an out of control divorce. Eventually, the cops must have told Janet she had to stop calling them, so she started calling animal control instead. The cops, we presume, told her that she was at risk of a criminal charge for abusing police services, but animal control had no such protection. They had to come out when someone filed a loose animal report. It got to the point where animal control knew what was happening and would come to our door to make small talk with my mom just to file their report. They told her though that as long as the calls happened they had to at least come out. And then my mom had a feather brained idea. Whenever animal control showed up my mom would buy a two pack of lawn flamingos and put them in our yard. She was a teacher so she got up early and when she did she would take the flamingos and make them stare at Janet's front door. Then she would get home earlier than Janet and move them around just like normal decor. Whenever Janet made a call my mom bought more flamingos and whenever Janet made a call a bigger and bigger flock of lawn flamingos stared her down the day after she left for work but would be casually mingling when she got home. I can only imagine what she must have thought, one would have to think she questioned her sanity but because of the movement and the incremental growth, but by the time it got to 12 or so lawn flamingos giving her the 100 yard glare, she made the connection. Janet never called animal control again after that. And ripe stars I am curious, have you ever had to call animal control on one of your neighbors? Let us know in the comments what happened. I gotta say so far I am really glad that I never had to call animal control on anyone that lived near me because especially in Europe I think that most people take pretty good care of their pets which is not exactly the same I can say here about Thailand to be honest. A lot of people seem rather uneducated when it comes to having cats or dogs in the house and a lot of them seemingly don't really care when the cats and dogs run around on the really busy streets where it is really dangerous for pets to live. And the next one is yet another Ask Reddit neighbor story and it starts like this. This was almost 10 years ago when my husband and I were still dating and we moved into our first apartment together. There were four buildings of apartments within walking distance of each other and my run-in was with someone in a neighboring building. We had a dog and my husband worked all different shifts while I didn't so I was the regular dog walker. I was coming back from a walk with her when this guy comes out of one of the other buildings. He starts walking towards me pitching a fit about the fact that I am walking my dog. He says he has seen me just leave my dog's poop on the grass and just walk away. A lie 100%. He says he sees her squat all the time and I just keep walking. I was dumbfounded. I said, my dog is a female, that's how she pees. He then just continues going on and on and on and at one point says, I've been watching you. And again, I am dumbfounded and I just go, you've been watching me? 
I remember going back to my apartment and calling my husband at work and just crying because I felt so scared and alone. We had been at that new place for only one month, so we had 11 more to go. We talked to the managers and they were absolutely no help. They said yeah, they knew who we were talking about, he has had multiple complaints against him and they think he sells drugs. Oh, and if he does that again, call the cops. To make a long story short, the neighbor ended up getting caught dealing drugs on one of the security cameras which then resulted in him getting arrested and evicted from the building. And the last one is another story from r slash ask reddit and it starts like this. This is my moment to shine. I, 30 female, live in a multi-family home on the second floor in a pretty wealthy town. Downstairs neighbors have been there for 12 years or so, a quiet single man in his early 60s with a dog. The first year or two I lived there, I had no issues with him. He was rarely home, didn't complain or cause any problems. My third year living there, I started to notice a young girl was staying at his place quite often. She was maybe my age and I could tell they were not related. I had no problem with him having guests until the intense arguments started. Constant yelling and fighting, furniture being knocked over, etc. Then I noticed this girl is staying over when my neighbor is not home. And she is having people over. And they are also fighting and partying and just being obnoxious. I was in law school and the noise was not helping with my study schedule, so I was getting annoyed. One morning I hear an intense argument and door slamming, so I look out the window and one of her guests is trying to break into the house. I guess she locked him out. She eventually lets him in and they leave. Months go by of this weird crap going on downstairs and I started to feel unsafe. I ended up installing cameras in my apartment and at the front door that I shared with my neighbor. Camera catches random men coming to the house at all hours of the day to see this girl. Sometimes my neighbor is home and sometimes he is not. I thought she was selling drugs or something because my neighbor was clearly using at this point. One day I go to get the mail and a court summons arrived in her name. I looked her up and she had a long criminal history. The noise and sketchy stuff continues until one day she just disappears. For like three months life was back to normal. She eventually comes back and things get way worse. Come to find out she was in jail for prostitution. Great. I complain to my landlord enough times where he finally tells my neighbor this girl is no longer allowed there, cops get involved and ban the girl from the house. Girl is gone but neighbor is still effed up on drugs and just generally being a piece of crap. I come outside one morning to find a scratch on my car. We share a driveway and stuff happens, no big deal, I let it go until a week later I hear a crash in the driveway. Neighbor slammed his car into mine and crushed the entire front end. I go outside to confront him and he is so screwed up he does not realize he hit my car. I call insurance and go through the whole thing. The same day I came home from work and parked my already beat up car in a different spot so that he wouldn't hit it again. Like 11 pm that night he crashes into my car again despite me moving it and completely totals my car. I call the cops at this point because again he is so effed up and doesn't realize he hit it nor does he come to tell me. He backed out of the driveway going like 30 miles per hour and didn't realize he smashed my car to pieces. Okay. Anyway, I moved the F out the next week, his insurance paid for my car and I hope he got some damn help. And ripe stars, with this we have reached the end of the video. However, if you still cannot get enough of my content, then I would highly suggest to check out my endless binge watch playlist, which will soon show up in the left corner of the screen. In addition, I would really appreciate it if you could not only subscribe to the channel, but also turn on the bell notifications, which you can do by clicking on the little bell icon right next to the subscribe button. This will help my channel tremendously and this will make sure that you don't miss any of my videos. Furthermore, if you want to see additional ripe content that I don't post on YouTube, then I would suggest to head on over to patreon.com slash ripe YouTube for more than 50 50 exclusive videos that you will not see anywhere else. Thank you so much for your amazing daily support and I hope to see you again tomorrow.